Good morning. Welcome all. I encourage you, if you'd like to follow along this morning, to take a Bible and open up to 2 Timothy chapter 3. We'll be reading from there in a moment. 2 Timothy 3. Once again, good morning, and welcome to all the, who are here. Welcome to our visitors. We're thankful that you are here this morning. If you have any questions of anything you, anything you see or hear this morning, please don't hesitate to ask one of the members, and we'll be more than happy to study the Bible with you. I'm very thankful for the rain this morning. Rain in Arizona is a pretty awesome thing. Uh, and rain in the desert is pretty cool uh, just by itself. We don't get, like, the Tempe Town Lake doesn't make its own rain. We don't get a, a cold front blowing in from Tempe. And so it's very cool to have the rain. It's also one of the things that I will miss about Arizona. For those of you who don't know, this weekend I will be moving to Oklahoma, and soon I will be getting married. And so this will be the last lesson I have at Monta Vista as a member for now. And in that, my mind was racing with different thoughts and ideas of what I could do. I had several very fine suggestions out in the foyer. Appreciate that. But this morning, I wanted to share a message of encouragement for both you and me. Our key verse this morning comes out of 2 Timothy chapter 3 and in verse 14. But you must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them. This morning, the message is to continue. Here it's talking about continuing in the things that we have learned. Growing up, uh, attending church, there are things that continue and don't continue, but also there are people who no longer continue to attend and brethren that we have lost. And that is very unfortunate. And so this message this morning is an encouragement to continue. Diving deeper into this point, let's con continue there in 2 Timothy 3, but we'll start in verse 10. But you have carefully followed my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, perseverance, persecutions, afflictions, which happened to me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, what persecutions I endured. And out of them all, the Lord delivered me. Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. But evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But you must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them, and that from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith, which is, which is in Christ Jesus. So it's important that we continue in the things that we have learned. When we come together for Bible study, when we come together for worship, when we study the Bible on our own, these things that we learn help us to be better Christians and to be better lights to the world. We need to continue in the things that we have learned. I know I'm guilty sometimes coming to worship or Bible study. I'm not present or my mind will wander. I'm sure others are guilty of it as well. But the things that we have learned help us toward salvation and they help us become better Christians. We must continue in the things which we have learned, but also we need to remember where we have learned them. Continuing on in verse 16. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. 
I love this translation where it says, complete, thoroughly equipped, every. It is lacking nothing. There is nothing beyond the Bible that we need to learn about salvation. Don has many books, or perhaps should say had many books, and they have helped him learn, and they might have helped him grow or given him a different perspective. But I can tell you that none of those books taught him anything more than what the Bible teaches about salvation. We need to continue in the things that we have learned and where we have learned them from. Next, please turn to Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13, we'll start in verse 1. Let brotherly love continue. Do not forget to entertain strangers, for by so doing, some have unwittingly entertained angels. Remember the prisoners as if chained with them, those who are mistreated, since you yourself are in the body also. We need to let brotherly love continue, and we need to continue in fellowship. The elders have set a goal this year that we pick three people a month and we contact them once a week to let brotherly love continue. And I will admit I have fallen short in that goal and shame on me for doing so. I have not let brotherly love continue. It's very unfortunate that during this time of COVID, those who once fellowshiped with, with us before are no longer fellowshipping with us now. And I can't help but think for me, if I had let brotherly love continue, if that would have happened. And unfortunately, the congregations that I've been a part of and the places that I have been, this is not an uncommon story. It's unfortunate that friends that I grew up with or people that I know are no longer fellowshipping with us. And that is a shame. Moving on to Acts chapter 2. We'll start in verse 44. We have a great example of the first Christians here in Acts. Acts chapter 2 and verse 44. Now all who believed were together and had all things in common and sold their possessions and goods, and divided them among all, as anyone had need. So, continuing daily with one accord in the temple, and breaking a bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor for all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. Here in the first century, Jews from all over the known world were gathered in Jerusalem for Pentecost. And when they heard the first gospel sermon brought by not only Peter, but the rest of the apostles, they were convicted, they were baptized, and they were saved. And this created a need that the other Christians at this time sold their possessions and they joined in fellowship with one another. Now today, it might not be selling our goods to help one another. It might be selling our time, selling our love, selling our concern or our help for our brethren. We need to be there to help one another. And the only way we know if one another needs help is by continuing in fellowship. I don't know any more about your life than what you know about my life. And that's a shame. But if we continued in fellowship and we follow this example here of the first Christians, we would know when one would have a need and we would be able to offer help when we had the ability to. We need to continue in fellowship. Let's also read also Acts chapter 2 starting in verse 41. And those who gladly received the word were baptized and in that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and breaking of bread and in prayers. 
So here we can see in the first century, they not only continued in the things that they have learned from the apostles' doctrine, but they also continued in fellowship and breaking of bread, but also they continued in prayer. Prayer is one of the most important ways we can continue to grow as Christians. Let's expand on this a little bit more. Let's turn over to Colossians chapter 4 and verse 2. Colossians 4 and verse 2. Continue earnestly in prayer, being vigilant in it with thanksgiving. And this is a very important point, I think, to bring up with prayer. Not only to continue in prayer, but prayer with thanksgiving. Let's expound on this point a little bit more. Let's turn to Philippians chapter 4, starting in verse 4. It's a very popular verse, but it's a verse that it's easy to talk about with prayer. Philippians 4 and verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gladness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So we can see here that when we cast our anxiety, our worries, our thoughts, our concerns, and our needs before the throne of God, if we pray with thanksgiving, we will have the peace of God. Some of us have experienced it. Others have heard stories or have known somebody who've gone through a very trying time in their life. It was very difficult, but that person's attitude and character was not shaken. And sometimes it's hard to see why. This, I believe, is one of the qualities. Prayer with thanksgiving. It says here if we have prayer with thanksgiving, the peace of of God will be with us. And I believe that's the characteristics of those who pray. Here at Monte Vista, we do a very good job of thanking God for what He has given us in blessings and the answer prayers. But having this attitude, I believe, changes us, changes our perspective, and changes our character. That if we pray with thanksgiving, we can have this peace of God. We need to continue in prayer. Moving on, Colossians chapter 1 and verse 23. Colossians 1 and 23. If indeed you continue in faith, grounded and steadfast, steadfast and are not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you heard, which was preached to every creature under heaven, of which I, Paul, became a minister. Here, we need to continue in faith. We need to have persever perseverance. If not, we can see what happens in this verse. Some were moved away from the hope of the gospel. As I said, there are brethren here that we once fellowshiped with, who we are no longer, longer fellowshipping with. They have not continued in their faith. They have moved away from the hope of the gospel. Let's expand on this a little bit more. Let's turn over to Acts chapter 14. Acts 14 and verse 21. And when they had preached the gospel to that city, they made many disciples. And they returned to Lystra, Iconium, and Antioch, strengthening the souls of the disciples, exhorting them to continue in faith, and saying, We must, through many tribulations, enter the kingdom of God. Here we can see we need to continue in faith. They were encouraging the disciples to continue in faith. But another point here, that we must, through many tribulations, enter the kingdom of God. 
Being a Christian, there's no promise of a comforting life. There's no promise that you will have it easy or no promise that things will just be handed to you. Trials will come. And those trials look different to different people. A trial to somebody might not be a trial to another person. But we cannot judge one another on the trials that we face. But it is through many trials that we must enter the kingdom of God. And by doing that, we must continue in faith. A great example of this is in 2 Timothy chapter 4. Again, another very popular verse. But a great verse when it talks about faith. Second Timothy chapter four and verse seven. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Finally, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day, and not to me only, but also to all who love his appearing. If we continue in faith, if we continue in hardships, if we continue to run the race that's before us, we will receive a crown of life, just like Paul talks about here. Turn over to 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 15. 1 Timothy 4:15. Meditate on these things. Give yourself entirely to them, that your progress might be evident to all. Take heed to yourself and to the doctrine. Continue in them. For in doing this, you will save both yourself and those who hear you. If we continue in these things, if we continue in what we have learned and where we have learned them from, if we continue in fellowship, if we continue in prayer, if we continue in faith, we can be saved. But not only us, but those who hear you. It might be fellow brethren. It might be family members. It might be co-workers. It might be somebody you met at Fry's. But by doing these things and continuing in them, we are able to save not only yourself, but others also. And if we endure and we continue in these things, we will be rewarded. 1 John chapter 5 and verse 13. 1 John 5 and 13. These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. I really appreciate Sean and his lessons. One of the things that Sean really encourages that I need to work on is having confidence in our faith and confidence in our salvation. And that's very easy to see from this verse. Read what it says. That you may know that you have eternal life. Not maybe. Not someday. Not going to be. Not going to be given to you. Know. Have. Eternal life. And that's my encouragement to you. That we might have eternal life together in heaven. There are many motivations we might have as Christians, and I can't say one of them is better than another. But one of my motivations is making it sad. <laughs> making it to heaven and seeing Jesus Christ. And I know that there are some who might not see again. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 
we never know where this life will take us, but also we not, not know when this life will take us. And it's a sad realization to know that. I might not see some of you again. I'll be back to visit. I have family here. But we don't know when that might be. And if you continue in these things, continue in what you've learned and where you have learned them from, if you continue in fellowship, if you continue in prayer, and you continue in the faith, we will have eternal life together. If you have any need of this congregation for prayers or help or concern, we can pray for you. Or if you need to be baptized this morning, we pray that you will come forward as we stand and as we sing.